Okay, now that you guys are aware, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this, so hope you guys aren't too surprised. Uh, so pretty much what I'm trying to do here today for you guys back at home that are wondering, I just wanted to do like an in-depth explanation of Hunters and their builds for Season 5. So I, I know that there's been a lot of questions with a lot of changes happening throughout the entirety of Season 5. There have been some differences in the itemization choices and what this guide is essentially hoping to accomplish is just giving you a better grounding for your casual and ranked games at home. That way, in case you've ever wanted to venture into the world of Hunters, or in case you are a seasoned Hunter player that maybe just needs a little bit of help, nothing wrong with that, I'll go ahead and break everything down. And there's going to be a couple different variations that we're going to go over, and I hope that my explanations on each of these itemization choices will be enough to assist you throughout your own matches at home. So for starters, I personally always find it best to pick up the Hunter's Blessing, no matter which Hunter you are playing on. I know that there are some variations where people try to just start off with like a raw T2 of the Transcendence building off into that Morningstar tree. Personally, not a huge fan of this. I think you're typically going to be better off just going straight for the Hunter's Blessing. The passive that you receive from this Hunter's Blessing is basically everything that you could ever possibly want on a Hunter. You get the 15% attack speed, you get an additional 15 bonus damage, which is really going to help out with some of that early lane clear. And you're mostly picking up this item for the initial laning phase. That's the entire premise of it. It's just meant to give you that MP5 and the attack speed a little bit of bonus damage that's just going to really help out any hunter throughout and typically first build we're going to go over is a standard devourer's gauntlets build so you're going to want to pick up this spike gauntlet as your starter whoops not i'm in that bottom spot but you're going to want to pick up spike gauntlet typically alongside the hunter's blessing and then you i personally like to go for two health pots two mana pots to uh, go alongside of this starting choice i find them to be like the best sustainability options for me in the lane as a hunter and, and this isn't really all that important either i, I have rom pulled up just because i like rom but this build is a, a strong hunter build no matter which god you are playing in the hunter role so like i was saying you can start off with the hunter's blessing and the spike gauntlet you don't have to immediately rush this spike gauntlet though into a devourer's gauntlet the reason why i'm saying this is because it all depends on how that early laning phase is going sometimes people will find themselves having a lot of difficulties with getting pressured underneath their own team one tower whenever that kind of stuff arises then you can sometimes be safe to go for the devil gloves but if you're concerned about your survivability in the lane I would recommend just going straight into the Ninja Tabai. That way you have plenty of mobility for any early ganks that might occur. And if you're struggling for gold as is, chances are you're probably not going to have the gold that you will want off of your first back in order to finish off this Spike Gauntlet into the Devourer's Gauntlet. And for that reason alone, I would definitely uh, just look for that Ninja Tabai option. Ninja Tabai over Warrior Tabai because... I was, I was stating, this is mostly a preference thing. A lot of these itemization choices in these Hunter builds are going to come down to player preference at the end of the day. But I just find that I tend to fare a little bit better having the additional attack speed from Ninja Tabai as opposed to just the raw power spike out of the Warrior Tabai. So after you finish your Ninja Tabai, you're going to want to come back to this Devo Gloves and you're going to want to make sure that you finish off that Spike Gauntlet into the full shebang of the Devourer's Gauntlet. That way you have your stacks going. These are three of your primary core items as any hunter if you're in that dual lane role. I'll go over other variations for uh, sometimes if you find yourself a hunter in the mid lane, but that, that's, you know, something to be discussed later on. For right now, we'll just continue with this current build. And I know in competitive level play, you guys have probably been seeing a, a lot of variations with hunter builds where hunters are sometimes prioritizing Poison Star here. Or, instead of the Poison Star, you might see your favorite pro player going for that Ikaval. Whether you decide to go for Ikaval or Poison Star is partially coming down to player preference, and it's also partially coming down to how you feel the enemy team composition is going to affect you as the match progresses. This is a really important part that I, I want to really drill home, because if you feel as though you have a lot of kill potential against the enemy team, or if you feel like their damage output is something that you want to try and keep more in check, and you don't feel as though you're going to encounter any issues for by committing to a crit build, and 
what I mean by that is, is that if the enemy team is full of incredibly tanky frontline based gods who are building into a, a lot of health and physical protections, you're probably not going to want to go straight to the poison star. Normally by third item, the matches progress deeply enough for you to be able to gauge whether or not the enemy team is prioritizing those health and physical prot items or if they're just looking for more of a damage output kind of variation and uh, like I said, that's just something that you're going to have to personally keep an eye on as a player back at home. This is mostly just like a, a rough guesstimate of a guide of where you should be ending up with your Hunter build. But for today's learning purposes, or at least for this very first build, I'm going to show you the crit variation. And that entails Poison Star being your third pick item. Poison Star is here because we're assuming that we're going to have a lot of bullying potential against the enemy ADC. And it's great just having that little bit of a slow, that little bit of damage output reduction it is going to be really critical in some of those early team fight engagements. Plus, crit, always great when alongside the Vowers Gauntlet and the Ninja Tabai in terms of securing or shredding objectives much faster than what you would normally anticipate. So going on from the Poison Star... You're going to need a little bit more assistance. You do want some attack speed. You do want some of those raw stats, which is why Executioner is usually going to be your next best bet immediately after picking up that Poison Star because it gives you the attack speed, gives you a little bit of that prot shred against your opponents. And on top of that, there is some physical power, just raw physical power damage, making Executioner just an all-around ideal item for any hunter to pick up. So that's really going to be your fourth item slot selection. Fifth item slot selection, it, it's kind of, again, up to player preference. You can either go for the Wind Demon, which is going to further pair alongside of those Poison Star passive stats. If you think that you want to just fully commit to chase down potential or crit consistency, Wind Demon is probably a better bet. And if you feel as though you have enough gold early on, you just want those big, massive crit strikes right away, Deathbringer is another chance that you can take. I personally, um, it, it, this decision usually comes down to the enemy team composition yet again. If I feel like my mobility might need a little bit more oomph to get me into the fight or get me out of the fight, I like to go for the Wind Demon in these sort of circumstances just because, as you can tell from what the passive reads here alone, your critical hits increase your attack speed and movement speed by 20% for 5 seconds. 5 seconds is a really long time to have those passives being engaged, and that makes Wind Demon a fairly ideal item in case you're looking for a crit bridge item that you still can look for a little bit of consistency on. But if you do pick the Wind Demon here, you're probably picking it up for the passive alone. So assuming that you build Wind Demon in your fifth item slot and assuming that the enemy team is all green lit for uh, you continuing your crit build, you're usually going to want to finish this type of build off with a Death Bringer. And that'll give you the, the triple crit, Death Strike, Death Bringer, Wind Demon, Poison Star, all of them incredibly strong crit items. Of course, like any Hunter build, there are other variations that could take place, as opposed to the Poison Star or the Wind Demon. You could possibly look to replace one of these with a Rage. Rage it, in itself it is not a bad item by any means. I think that it can still provide you a lot of consistency for critical strike chances, but this is more so an item that you want to lean towards if you're having issues with your consistency on critical strikes. I think for the most part, the passes that are provided at a Poison Star and Wind Demon make them just slightly above Rage in the majority of Hunter circumstances for team fights and engagements and objective shred, but that doesn't mean that Rage is entirely out of the picture. If you want the Rage, probably the easiest item to substitute it for would be the Wind Demon. I, I think that'll be your best bet of an item to swap things out with. So that's one variation that you can have of this crit build. And you can also not necessarily even need all three of these crit items within the same build. Say, for example, you want to do just the Deathbringer after the Executioner. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if that's going to be the case, then you might be better off just going straight for the Aussie because it'll give you a little bit more attack speed, a little bit more lifesteal, and you might benefit slightly more off of that Aussie passive with those huge critical strikes. And that could also potentially catch the enemy team off guard. So those are two pretty easy variations of, of the crit build for Hunters. I want to take things back a little bit for the dual lane roll, and I want to look again towards Hunters, but in a different light. Remember with my original statement being that if you feel as though the enemy team composition isn't going to be super beefy or problematic with those physical prots, then commit to crit. If you do think that they're going to be a problem, 
this is where things can get a little bit spicy. So you have the Ickable, which is what I originally prefaced this uh, variation build with. And I, I like Ickable in, in this slot for the third item because I think it's a great item to help complement those boxing 1v1 matches in the laning phase, assuming that the enemy hunter maybe wants to try and go toe to toe with you. That's always a possible avenue that you can definitely look to take up with the Ickable. Plus, there's a lot of hunters that are ideal right now that also already have attack speed steroids built into their kits. Ikavol only complements that even further, making this an all-around ideal item that can just help you with dealing damage in some of those early team engagements also, maybe some of those Oracle team fights that you might start to get involved in for rotations. Ikavol can have a, a pretty serious impact there. After the Ikavol, you can look to build straight into the Executioner. Again, Executioner just all around feels like a very strong, great item for Hunters. It gives you some of that proc shred, gives you the attack speed, a little bit of power, just ideal stats all around for Hunters to have. And again, this is assuming that the enemy team composition is going to be a little bit more beefy. This is where we start to look into an old friend of ours, which is going to be the Chin Size. I really like Chin Size for any health shred build uh, because you are mostly looking to be able to attack just about anybody in the match. Are you going to be looking for 1v1s against the enemy hunter? Not necessarily, maybe not even trying to focus out the enemy team's carries, but just having that shred capability for yourself is going to open up a, a different way of survivability against the enemy team because nobody likes getting run down by the Hercules with thorns and his regenerate popped because it, it's just never fun when you're taking all that damage and not being able to dish any out. This type of build is really going to help compensate for that and you'll be able to make them feel the pain if you go for this route plus you'll also have a little bit of that life stealing option which we're going to address just a little bit further here but last and not least can never go wrong with finishing this build off with the titan's bane titan's bane of course is going to give you some great prot shred just because if the team is going very physical prot heavy titan's bane will definitely make sure to take away from that and i know a lot of people say that it's counterintuitive to put Titan's Bane and Executioner within the same build, but Titan's Bane is one of those drastic situations where if the enemy team is insanely tanky, this item is going to help you out greatly, and it, it really will not, like, it, it won't mess with your power stride or, or with any uh, of your hunter normal hunter gameplay style. I, I think that this is just an awesome item for really breaking through the, the front line of a team at times. Of course, you're not hard locked into picking up Titan's Bane as your only form of penetration. Brawlers and Crusher are probably the other two items that you would look towards as a hunter, but it can be a little bit awkward to try and finish off these items in the pen tree because they only provide plat pen. Normally, by the end of the game, you're going to need a little bit more pen, which is where Titan's Bane again comes into play. But. On top of that, Crusher does have that 20% attack speed, which is ideal for Hunters. It's just that not a lot of Hunters can really utilize the passive of Crusher, making it a not as desirable item for some of the more attack speed based Hunters. I, I think if you're going to finish off a build with a Crusher, then you're probably looking more towards some of those ability based Hunters like the Medusa, Neath, Chiron, I think even Amus and Cobb to an extent. But Keep those kind of hunters in mind where you're playing off a little bit more of their kits as opposed to just directly from auto attacks alone like we see from gods like Rom. But for learning purposes today, oh, and of course brawlers, you pick brawlers up if you actually have an ability-based hunter that can utilize the passive of the anti-heal. And again, this also is taking very high notes of what the enemy team composition, uh, composition is like and how impactful you feel you are as an individual into their carries and, and draft overall. So sometimes Brawler can come into play, sometimes Crusher comes into play. Personally, I feel like I never go wrong going with Titans Bay in this slot. And of course, no one wants to hang on to the Ikavul for the entire match. You're gonna end up selling this Ikavul most likely for an Aussie. You don't have to get an Aussie, it's just it complements really nicely, double lifesteal into those heavy frontline in case there are thorns and the like on the enemy team. You're gonna have a lot of survivability with just these two items alone and the rest of the build. Who the but fuck jukes that way? We're yeah, gonna pretend zero, like that's there. not in the video. I definitely should have turned that off. My apologies sincerely, but we're gonna keep on powering through. Uh, so if you don't go Aussie, 
in this slot or if you don't sell the Ichabel for the Aussie, no problem. That's not that big of a deal either. All you really need to keep in mind is that there is also um, defensive items that you can actually go for. So really strong defensive items that I can think of for hunters. If you're having a lot of issues with survivability or you feel like you're being targeted out very heavily, you can go for a Magi's Cloak depending on if the enemy team only has very limited amounts of hard CC. The Magi's Cloak is ideal in that situation. If you feel like you just want or you're constantly being smothered and, and you want a quick escape, Mantle and Discord might be your best bet then. Uh, that's just going to depend solely on how you're feeling for learning purposes today. We're just going to assume that we don't need to go for these defensive options and that an Aussie will be a-okay here in this situation. But this is a second variation, or I should say third technically, out of all the Hunter builds we've covered already that um, I, I would like to engage with. And the last variation of, of the Hunter build that I wanted to address is actually one that you guys might be pretty familiar with because we saw a lot of it during the start of Season 5, but it, it kind of fell off after a little bit. And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, the main reason why you don't typically tend to see pros and the like prioritizing the Transcendence builds any longer in the dual lane is, is because you just don't have as much survivability and, and late game impact, I feel, without the, the Devos Govs. Because Devos really give you so much survivability with that amount of lifesteal. It, it really, I, I can't stress it enough, lifesteal is almost everything when it, comes to, when it comes to Smite and Conquest gameplay. But if you ever feel like you want to just mess around with things a little bit differently, this is a variation of the, of the Hunter build that I think can also still be utilized on quite a lot of Hunters, although it, I wouldn't really recommend this type of build for those raw attack speed based Hunters. So pretty much Hunters that rely very heavily on their in-hands or they have attack speed steroids built into their kit. Kind of like Rom, it, you're never going to really look for this unless you're taking a Hunter into the mid lane. I think that this is a build that can also work with any Hunter you take it to mid. You're probably going to want to go Transcendence route just because you need the mana survivability. In dual lane, it's not as... It, you don't need the mana as much because you already have Hunter's Blessing, which is giving you the 10 and MP5. But on top of that, you also have the... Um, excuse me, brain fart right there. But you, have, you also have your support assisting you. Uh, nine times out of ten, there's going to be a support in that dual lane alongside of you. If there isn't, uh, something's probably not right, but, you know, that's that's the support uh, in their own disguise. But uh, So there's the Transcendence, and you don't have to finish off building Transcendence right away. You do not have to rush this item by any means. Like this, one more time, just depends on how you feel as a player in your own survivability and in your own, like, power play so if you don't feel like you're getting pressured out too heavily and you get the gold online early enough and you feel like it's safe to rush transcendence or you're not going to get ganked a whole lot then go ahead and finish off that transcendence you're probably going to be a-okay and, and nothing too crazy is going to happen from Who it the fuck jukes that not way? only that but with transcendence being online you're going to have all that mana that you've been needing for quite some time and, and that is also just something that I can't stress enough. It's just a really awesome thing to have when, when you have that mana and the power spike. But if you do feel like it's going to be a problem, you don't have to finish off that Transcendence right on way. You can go for the Ninja Tabai and you can get your boots online. You don't have to build Ninja Tabai in the slot. You can also go Warrior Tabai. Again, player preference. I always value attack speed more so than anything else. If you're playing an ability-based hunter and you want to go Transcendence build, then Warrior Tabai is fine. If you're playing an attack speed hunter, I would recommend Ninja Tabai. So, assuming that you go for the Warrior Tabai in this law as an ability based hunter or as a hunter in the mid lane, you can also choose. There's a couple of different pathways here. You can either go for the Crusher, because Crusher is still providing you with a lot of those stats that ability based hunters can really benefit off of. Or, Crusher is also still strong because the 20% attack speed still complements. So, if you don't feel like you're having any survivability issues or you don't think that lifesteal is going to be very beneficial for you, I would recommend Crusher here. You can also choose to go an Aussie in its place, just because Aussie, it's going to give you that little bit of lifesteal, 1700 gold, incredibly cheap lifesteal to have. For learning purposes today, we're going to assume that there's a Crusher, third item here, and then as any Hunter, you're probably still going to need, even as an ability-based Hunter, a little bit of lifesteal. I myself personally like to go Aussie in this slot for the reasons that I just addressed earlier. You, you do want some of that survivability to help your team with pulling objectives and the like. 
So after we've committed to the Crusher, the Aussie, the last couple of items are really going to be very heavy game dependent. Not, I, I don't want to say 99% of the time you're going to be building Executioner or Chin Size, but this is where it really depends on what your team's composition is like and what the enemy team's composition is like. If you're having a lot of issues with the enemy team, having tons of health and prots, Chin Size can be a pretty safe fit. If there's somebody else in your team that can pick up an Executioner, then you're definitely in the clear for Chin Size. If there isn't and they need you to be the person with the Executioner, then go ahead and lock in that execution. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, for today, we're going to assume that you can get away with building the Chin Size. Chin Size right here, that's all fine and dandy. Then you're going to want to finish off with one last pen item. You can go Brawlers, you can go Titans, you can even go Jotuns if you're really feeling up to it. But normally it's too late in the game to really benefit off of these Jotuns. If you were ever going to build the Jotuns with this build, it would be in the position of the Crusher. And the only Hunters you're really going to be looking at that towards would be gods such as Chiron and Neath, I think, because they're the two most heavily based uh, utility Hunters that are ideal in laning phases and uh, stages of the game right now. Maybe even Cupid, but like I said, uh, addressing back to this original point, for learning purposes here today, we're going to assume that you're safe and sound picking up that Titan's Bane. And I hope with all of this in mind, like I said, a lot of these items are pretty interchangeable. But for the most part, as a Hunter player, the vast majority of your builds are going to be based not only on the enemy team compositions and match progression, but also just what feels best to you throughout a match. I, I personally, like I said, just tend to have better results whenever I go for the Devo Gloves route as opposed to Transcendence, unless I am playing a Hunter in the mid lane role. Uh, then that kind of shakes things up a little bit. But overall, I, I think that most of you guys for your ranked in casual matches will probably be more satisfied and suited for the first three builds that I covered. And that's about all I've got. Apologies one more time for, for the sub alerts. I kind of forgot to turn that on and I wanted to just do this all in, in one go for you guys so you can have the knowledge to take with you into your own matches back at home today. So hope that this helps out and I'll see you guys whenever the SPL's back on.